Hello, friends. Happy Wednesday. Ah, nice day today. Very, very warm. Uh, summer is a coming. And I'm having a day where I got lots and lots of breaks, so I'm happy about that. I'm getting my day job done, but I'm able to take out, you know, 15, 20 minutes here and there to, to do some pipe work. That's why I've got my nifty protective apron on, which uh, is keeping my wife happy because it's amazing how quickly I can ruin a shirt. It really is. Although, to be fair, uh, to really be effective, I would have to wear this when eating. So, uh, so uh, this this pipe here, uh, this is a kind gift from my buddy Johnny Ford. And look at that thing. Just look at the size of that ball. This is amazing. This is, this is like a a dream burly pipe for me and it was really kind of Johnny to send this to me uh, we basically did a uh, well I shouldn't say that he sent it as a thank you for the work I did on the um, the medico guardsman I always want to call that a marksman uh, the medical guardsman the series that just finished up uh, and he actually sent it along with the with the pipe and I just haven't had a chance to, to smoke it until today but uh, I really appreciate it, Johnny. It's it's a beautiful pipe, and I have not smoked it yet, so you're going to see the, the first the first go. I've done very little to it. Uh, it was in pretty good shape when I got it. I took a little bit of tooth chatter out of the stem and uh, buffed and waxed it. That's about it. But, uh, man, look at that ball. I cannot wait. So, let's get some Haunted Bookshop in this thing. Haunted Bookshop is... I, you know, over the years, I've... I've come to the opinion that it doesn't really matter what you use to break in your pipe. Um, keeping in mind that I don't smoke aromatics, so maybe they're terrible. I don't know. But uh, I used to always use Carter Hall, and then I just, you know, stopped smoking so much Carter Hall, and, you know, I, I smoke it in the mornings, but if I want to uh, break in a pipe in the afternoon, Wanda Bookshop is there. And it's good. But again, I don't really think it matters. Okay, we got that loaded up. The draw is excellent. So this pipe is a, it's an Omega. Before I light it, let me let me read this to you because I don't want to turn it upside down once it's got burning hot ash in it. Uh, Omega Centurion, Algerian Briar, made in France. So it's a French pipe. It actually has a very faint uh, fleur de lis on the stem. I could not get that to to take any marking and didn't want to try to scratch it in deeper because it's, it's complex and curly uh, but yeah it's uh, it's an interesting pipe I don't know anything about a mega other than what I just read on the pipe but Johnny said it smokes beautifully he it's one of was one of his favorites and I'm really humbled that he sent me one of his favorite pipes so let's go ahead and get this lit up such a wide bowl it takes a while to get the flame all the way around there and then over a fact all my tampers are going to fit mm, very nice <clears throat> excuse me very very nice Boy, I don't know what it is, but there's something the past week or so that has really been flaring up my allergies. My wife has really bad allergies. She refers to this as blooming season. So, I was going back and forth with Johnny uh, about this pipe and about his... Uh, guardsman and actually got a chance to, to chat with him for a bit this past weekend uh, he gave me a call and it was great to catch up with him if you don't know Johnny Ford he's you should I'll put a link below go check him out he's he's just a good solid guy that you you really enjoy listening to so go check him out 
in addition to being a good, solid guy you enjoy listening to, he's a good friend. And he said something like, you know, I sent you that pipe, but I don't do the all the stuff that you do. And <clears throat> I got to thinking, you know, I, sh I do these, these pipe restoration videos, and I'm showing you how I restore a pipe, but I hope everybody realizes, and I certainly realize, that I'm not showing you the only way to, to restore a pipe. I'm showing you the way that I've figured out works best for me. And sometimes I watch other folks. Um, you know, one that I really enjoy is, is uh, George Debo um, for, from High Grade Pipe Repair, who, you know, has thought about this stuff a lot more than I have and has come up with some really, really interesting and unique methods. And I borrow freely from those, and I try to always say I saw this on George's video. <coughs> Not always successfully, because I, I just forget in the heat of talking to the camera and trying to get the pipe work done. But yeah, I mean, we, we all learn from one another, and, and one of you guys could make a pipe restoration video that I can learn something from, because you're, you know, you're trying different things. You've got different materials and uh, tools available to you, and you might find something that works really well that I don't know about. So that's one side. But the other thing that I, that I started thinking about is, you know, he said he doesn't do all that stuff, but yet he's perfectly happy with his pipes. You know, he, he buys an estate pipe. He has his set of things that he does to that estate pipe in order to be happy. And then he goes off smoking it, and he's a happy guy. Now, I will say, so this pipe is one that Johnny bought as an estate. He did work on it and, and then was, was smoking it. And... Um, it was in great shape. I didn't have to really do anything. But I got this thing about tooth chatter. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> um, and there was some, some uh, not even tooth chatter, but like dents from, from clenching. And it just drives me nuts because I know I can get rid of it. So I did. You know, but I didn't need to do that. And then I buffed and waxed it just because I wanted to show it off. It was it was looking pretty good before. So what I'm trying to get at here is, you know, is the method that I use, and by method I mean all of the stuff I do to a pipe, in any way better than the method that Johnny uses, uh, where, you know, he gets the pipe smoking and he's happy. And the answer is no, you know, if it's your pipe. But if it's your pipe and you just, you want to get it to the point that you're comfortable smoking it, you could do whatever you want. You know, I wouldn't advise it, but you could just take it out of the box from eBay and put it in your mouth. I mean, you could do that. I wouldn't, wouldn't do it. Uh, but, you know, some folks will just run a couple pipe cleaners of, with alcohol on them through it and, and wipe the stem down and they're ready to go. That's fine. Other folks will do a little bit of sanding on the stem. But, um, you know, some folks really want to get the, the rim cleaned, and other folks don't care if there's buildup on the rim. The point is it's your pipe. You know, whatever you are comfortable with, whatever you, makes you happy. Now, when I make videos, I am restoration videos. And when I work on a customer's pipe, I am trying to... In my mind, at least, I'm trying to restore that pipe to like new condition. And I actually get a little uh, frustrated isn't the right word, but let's just say a little frustrated sometimes with customers that send me a pipe and I see these things that I could do to make it look like new. And they say, no, I like it that way. No. But it's their pipe. You know, it's their pipe. So I prefer to make them look like new because I have the tools and the materials to do it and it's something I enjoy. I enjoy that end product, that picture that I put at the end of a restoration series. 
But I never thought about it until this weekend when I was talking to Johnny, or actually shortly after I hung up with him, that that approach could actually be discouraging some, you know, guy sitting out there thinking, I'd like to get in a state pipe and clean it up. Uh, I hope not, but it could be. Uh, so so maybe, maybe I have to do a couple of videos on like bare minimum or something like that. But when we're talking about restoring pipes for ourselves, we all know what the finish line looks like. And that's what we have to get to. And the route we take to get there isn't important as long as we get there. Boy, Johnny was right. This thing smells like a dream. And boy, it's treating the burly very well. Not really a clench. Although, whoever had it before was clenching it because it had two incisor uh, dents in it. It's funny, when I, when I get a pipe, I, I try to think about the person that was smoking it. You know, the, what does the tooth chatter say about their, their method of smoking? And, you know, sometimes you get pipes where there'll be spots that are worn, you know, or spots that are particularly dirty. And, you know, that's where the guy's hand would rest. Um, you, know, you, can, you can actually learn a lot about the person, at least his smoking style. But boy, if pipes could talk. And something else that Johnny and I were you know, briefly hit on. You know, what, wouldn't you love to know where this pipe had been? You know, we know it was made in France. How did it get to the U.S.? Was it just set in a crate full of pipes for some shop to sell here? Who bought it? Did somebody buy it in France? How did it get to the U.S.? How did it get to Johnny? How many people owned it and smoked it between the carver and Johnny? And now me. And each of those people have a story. And I'm fortunate that, and I guess many of us are now, fortunate that I know part of this pipe story because it was given to me by a friend that enjoyed it. And, you know, I've talked about some of the pipes that I've got from Danny Shore where, you know, they have a story that I know. And he restored a state pipe, so he actually, they, they have a story before him that I'll never know. If only they could talk. Yeah, they would have a lot to say, I'm sure. So, Friday night is coming up. Well, we're halfway through the week. Uh, good show on Friday. We're going to have uh, Greg Tunnel from the Tunnel Take on. And Greg is uh, hes a personality for sure. I'm going to be talking to Greg later this afternoon just to get things worked out. But I'm really looking forward to this. I've uh, been wanting to get him on for a while and, you know, just taking time with the scheduling and all that. So... I hope you'll join us. It's going to be a fun show for sure. So that's Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Well, folks, I'm going to enjoy this pipe. And then we're going to get some more work done. So I hope you're all having a great Wednesday. Wish you all the best for the rest of your week. And I'll hope to see you on Friday. <laughs> Take care, guys.